Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 2nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We've got a quick diary today by Didi with a common false positive that people run into analyzing PDFs created with OpenOffice or LibreOffice. These PDFs commonly do include an open action. Now, this open action is often found in malicious PDFs because it is then used to execute JavaScript that's embedded in the PDF. In the case of open office this is however not the case the open action is used to just display the first page at the right zoom level this is in line with the pdf standard and the da has an excerpt from the particular pdf documentation and Google released an update for Android. This update does fix two critical vulnerabilities in the media framework, a high one in framework, and then another eight high severity vulnerabilities in system. The high severity vulnerabilities typically allow for approach escalation, while the two critical vulnerabilities in media framework do allow for remote code execution. And of course, you may have to wait for your carrier to offer these patches for you. They do affect Android 7.0 through 9. And talking about Android, some pretty ingenious Android malware apparently is making the rounds in Asia. In this particular case, the Android application is interfering with calls to specific phone numbers. The way this application apparently has been used is that after a user installed it on their phone, typically assuming that it is actually a valid application from their bank, if the victim now is making a voice call to the bank's official phone number, this call is actually rerouted to the attacker. This of course now gives the attacker the chance to be very plausible and believable because the victim thinks that they they did what they were supposed to. They dialed the number that they knew or retrieved from a trusted source for their bank. So this makes it a lot easier for the attacker to then actually convince the victim to give up personal information. The application apparently also includes MP3 files for various targeted banks that are then being played back to the user as the user calls the bank to completely emulate what the user would expect to hear when calling the bank. Not sure if similar malware would be possible on iOS as well. So far, this has only been cited on Android. And again, the victim first has to install the malicious software in order to enable this attack. And Google is continuing its push to support WebAuth and the new and emerging passwordless authentication standard by the FIDO Alliance. So far, it was only possible to use WebAuth and with Google Chrome on Google properties, while Firefox and Microsoft Edge are now supported as well after they added support for WebAuth. And but at this point, you can only log in using these browsers. You cannot actually register a new token using those browsers. And then as a reminder today, that's Tuesday at 10.30 Eastern, I'll be doing a webcast for SANS covering credential stuffing. This is an attack that uh, we do see quite a bit uh, these days, of course, and I'll discuss how it works and uh, most of all, how to defend against this attack. And this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.